Scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And this is the NIV uh, translation. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of, the, of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had, when he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may too go and worship him. After they had heard, Herod the, heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was born. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The word of God for the people of God. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another way. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Great God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. How many of us here enjoy traveling? Travel can be fun, but it could be challenging. Many of us have probably camped in trailers at the beach or the mountains, stayed in nice hotel rooms with heating and air conditioning, nice, soft, comfortable beds, bathrooms close by. But when was the last time that you really camped out in a little tent, sleeping in a sleeping bag on the hard ground? I have a friend who took hiking and camping very seriously. He loved doing both and decided that he would do the entire Appalachian Trail, or as the serious hikers call it, the AT. It takes several months. It covers over about a thousand miles of rugged terrain from Georgia to Maine. And it's quite a long journey on foot, especially alone. My friend put in a lot of research to figure out the best way to accomplish this goal. Part of the planning was deciding how to send meals to himself along the way to resupply. So he took over his parents' basement and laid out all the food he would need for the journey in little corners and little squares and put little notes beside them when they would be to be, to be mailed and where to mail them to so that he could stop along the way to pick up his supplies. He also exercised extensively to plan for the journey because he was planning to cover 20 miles a day, which is no easy feat, and to finish in three months before it got too cold in Maine. I remember driving him with his fully loaded backpack to the start of the Appalachian Trail in Georgia. Now, he did not have a cell phone, as Melissa pointed out, or a GPS. He relied on a paper map and a compass. He had a one-man tent, a small sleeping bag, and not much else. Now, he completed this journey, and just as he had planned, but he encountered many things along the journey that were unplanned, such as bears and moose, elk, snakes, bugs, all kinds of interesting things. But after the trip was over, he came to talk to me about it and told me that one thing was for sure, that he was definitely changed 
by the journey, that he was changed by the journey. Well, friends, I've come here not to talk about camping in the wilderness. Instead, I've come to talk to us today about our spiritual journey. Do you feel alone or lost in the wilderness of everyday life? What are you doing to grow stronger spiritually? Do you continue to seek Jesus in your daily life? What does the Bible say about the Magi and their journey to find Jesus? So our scripture lesson today is about the Magi and their journey to find Jesus, but it's also what happened to them after they found Jesus. What happened to them? They think they're on a quest to find the new king of the Jews, but in reality they are on a journey, a journey to meet God in the flesh. And their journey begins when they see a special star in the sky. The Magi were astrologers in the royal courts of Persia. They were not kings, but advisors to kings. And their job was to study the stars and interpret the signs. And their journey began when they spotted a star, a star of great beauty, a new star indicating that a new king had been born in the land of Judea. Now the Magi follow this star for 900 miles. It's a journey that takes several months to find the new king. And they travel to Jerusalem thinking that the king will be born surely in a royal palace in the holy city of Jerusalem. So when the Magi arrive in Jerusalem, they ask the current king, Herod, a very important question. Where? Where can we find the king of the Jews? Now the king and his attendants were greatly disturbed. After all, Herod is king. So the chief priests and teachers of the law are summoned by Herod who asked them another important question. Where? Where will the Messiah be born? The chief priests and teachers of the law turn to the Holy Scriptures because the Scriptures give them the direction to the Messiah. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people. Now after hearing this, Herod called the Magi and met with him secretly. He met with him secretly because he didn't want anyone else to know this news, the news of the new Messiah. Herod had other plans for Jesus, and he cynically asked the Magi to search for the child and report back to him so he too could worship this new king. So the Magi departed Jerusalem and continued to follow the star. And the star stopped over Bethlehem, over a house where the child was. And when they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. They were overwhelmed with joy because they were at the end of this long journey. They had found what they were looking for. They found the treasure, the long-awaited Messiah. They found Jesus with his mother and Mary. Now, when the Magi found Jesus, they honored the Son of God by bowing down to him and worshiping him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold for a king, frankincense for God, and myrrh for a sacrifice. When the Magi finished greeting the new king, they were warned in a dream to avoid Herod, and they took a different route to return home. When these Gentile wise men started on their journey, they were looking for a king in a palace in a royal city. What they encountered was a mother and child in a modest home in a little town called Bethlehem, the house of bread. What they found, though, was life-changing for them. So what about you this morning? Are you ready for life changes, for a spiritual transformation? How many of us gathered here this morning like things just the way they are? How many of us would prefer to see change in our lives? Change can be good, but it can also be difficult. 
Many of us would like to change, but change requires time and energy, sacrifice. About four years ago, I received a letter asking me if I was willing to volunteer to be part of a study about United Methodist clergy and our health. I was asked if I'd be willing to do several things on a quarterly basis, like having my blood taken, checking my blood pressure, checking my weight, my BMI, wearing a step counter, and submitting to psychological questions. I know what you're thinking. Did he say yes? <laughs> yes, I did. And I've been in this study since the beginning. But the purpose of the study was to help people like me take charge of their health. It turns out that most clergy do not take good care of themselves. And the Duke Clergy Health Initiative wanted to educate us and change the way we live. So over the past four years, I've been to lectures and seminars about how to eat right and exercise, take time off to relax. Now some of these focuses some of these studies focused on what we were to eat, things like grilled meat, fruits, vegetables, what we were not to eat, bread, fast food, fried food, potato chips, french fries, desserts. They also focused on eating smaller portions. Imagine someone coming into your house and going into your cabinets and taking the larger plates, the big dinner plates you have, right? Taking them out and saying, you can't ever use these again and showing you the little salad plates and saying, use that, and no seconds either, by the way. Doing all these things require change. If I wanted to have a better life, I was going to have to change. If I wanted to have a better future, I needed to change. If I was going to serve God... I needed to change. Are we willing to change? The Magi focused on their goal of finding Jesus by doing something about their lives. They did not just sit at home and read about Jesus. They made an effort to find Him. They undertook a long and arduous journey and sacrificed many things to find Jesus. They had faith and listened for God and God's Word in the middle of the wilderness. And when they found Jesus, they were transformed. They did not go back to Herod. They did not go back the way they came. They re returned home by, by a different way. When they found God as a child, their lives were forever changed. So are we ready to change? We are all on a spiritual journey looking for God to change us. We begin our journey at the baptismal font. When we are baptized, we enter the church and are forever changed. We are changed knowing that Jesus died for our sins. We are children of God instead of children of the world. We have a new family. Look around you, your church family. We renounce evil. We commit to vows. God gives us signs at the beginning of our journey. So look for God in the waters of baptism and know that you can change. We continue our journey with God at the altar rail. The altar rail is where we speak to God through prayer. Prayer time is not only a time to speak, but also to listen. We do not change God through prayer. Rather, we hope to be changed by God through prayer. So look for God in your prayers and know that you can be changed. Finally, we are sustained on the journey with God at the Lord's table. The Lord's table is where God feeds our bodies, our minds, and our souls with the body and blood of Jesus. God changes us through the gift of bread and wine. Look for God in the bread and wine and know that you can be changed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.